Thank you very much, Sri Balsubhramanji. Now I call upon Sri Sujit Kumar. Thank you, sir. Sir, how much time are you giving me? Uh, you have eight minutes. Thank you, sir. Sir, we all know that tourism is a major engine of economic growth globally and in our country, India as well, and an important source of employment and foreign exchange for our country. It has huge multiplier effect in terms of increased spending, in terms of increased economic activity, in terms of generating employment, and reduction of poverty as well. Tourism contributes, according to many studies, about 5% of India's GDP and accounts for about 12% of the jobs that are created in the country. The tourism industry accounts for 8.5 crore, that's 85 million direct and indirect jobs in our country. But because of COVID-19, the year 2000 has been one of the worst years for the tourism industry. The World Tourism Barometer of the UN World Tourism Organization noted that international arrivals globally fell by 74%, and I think the Indian numbers would be close to that. I do not have the numbers for India, but it should be close to that. The ministry has been allocated only 2,027 crore in this year's budget, which is an increase of 22% from the actual expenditure of 1920, but a 19% reduction compared to the 2,500 crore allocation made in FI 2021. Some of the previous speakers also expressed concern about this. It's a substantial reduction, 19%, particularly in this COVID year, over previous year's allocation is a substantial reduction. Sir, Sir is this not actually going to deliver a blow to the tourism industry, which is, which is already reeling from huge losses due to the COVID-19 crisis? I must also mention that the budget for the ministry still constitutes only 0.06% of the total expenditure budget of the central government in 2021. The allocation to the ministry has been consistently lesser than the projected requirement and demand. This is undesirable, sir, since the sector has huge potential to stimulate economic activities because of its linkage with agriculture, logistics, transport, handicraft, etc. Sir, while the government did roll out economic relief package for several sectors and industries post-COVID, the tourism sector has been noticeably absent, and the union budget missed a golden opportunity to address the crisis in the sector. Government should have provided and can still provide a growth stimulus to the industry in the light of the impact of COVID-19. It should have announced a sector-specific, tourism sector-specific package under the Atman Nirbhar Bharat package and saved at least 30, 35 million jobs which are at the risk of extinction out of the 85 million odd job, 8.5 crore job that I spoke about, employed directly or indirectly by the industry. So foreign tourist arrival in the country is an issue, is a uh, issue which we uh, have seen over the last many years and particularly concerns me as it's not very encouraging, it's only 1.23% of the global tourism. I do, not have, I do not want to quote the numbers for 2020 as it's irrelevant. Sir, in India, we have 40 World Heritage Sites, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It's the sixth largest number of sites in the world in terms of numbers. However, sir, India's rank in Tourism Competitiveness Index of the World Economic Forum is a lowly 34. So we are much below tiny nations like Singapore and South Korea, which are 17 and 16 respectively. This indicates how underutilized the tourism potential in our country is. India needs to work on two particular parameters, sir. One is enabling environment, which includes hygienic conditions, safety and security of the tourists, particularly women <coughs> tourists visiting the country, where it's ranked 98 in the index. And also needs to work on improving our tourist service infrastructure, where we are ranked a very low 109, close to Pakistan, which is ranked at 112. The Niti Aayog has targeted to increase the international tourist arrival to India to 3% of the global, total global tourist. With this poor tourism infrastructure and poor enabling conditions like hygiene and, and, and poor security for women tourists, how do we achieve this 3% number, sir? Sir, the increased allocation to tourism infrastructure 
that uh, one uh, honorable member was talking about, though encouraging is not enough, it's, it's not even 1,000 crore, we need substantially, much more, uh, substantially more than that. And this is only possible when there is increased allocation to the tourism ministry itself. 2,000 odd crore is just not enough for the industry. So connectivity is one, uh, another issue, key issue, uh, which can unlock a huge uh, inbound tourism potential in our country. The railways can play a crucial role in promoting tourism in India because of its wide reach. It also provides an economic and eco-friendly means of transport across the country. Railways can also tap into the numerous pilgrimage centers across the country. There should be, sir, in my view, a representation for tourism in the railway board, which is not there currently, which would help them frame tourism-related policies. In case of connectivity by road and air, closer coordination must be established with the Ministry of Civil Aviation and Road Transport. For instance, the Ministry of Tourism has identified 50 important tourist destinations where road connectivity must be established. Of these, 23 are within the purview of Ministry of Transport and Highway, where progress should be monitored by the Ministry of Tourism. Similarly, 46 tourism site is sector routes were included under the Udan 3 scheme. However, only 21 of these have been operational as of February 21. I urge Honorable Minister through you, sir, to look into these aspects. So finally, I would like to talk about tourism in the context of my state of Odisha. Sir, Dhanu Yatra is an ethnic theatrical presentation of the Krishna Leela over a period of 11 days. And it is the world's largest open air theater in the world. And I urge all honorable members to visit Dhanu Yatra at least once in their lifetime. It should be recognized as a national festival and should be included in the list of fairs and festivals of India. Sir, so secondly, an institute of hotel management should be established in Western Odisha, either Sambalpur or Raukala, to meet the growing need of the hotel industry for quality manpower. Sir, so thirdly, Odisha is the place that gave birth to a new religious cult called the Mahima Dharma, which talks about international well-being. It was popularized by Sant Kavi Bhima Bhoi, whose immortal words, Praninka arata dukha, apramita dekhu dekhu keba sohu, mo jivana pache narke padithau, jagata uddhara ho, which translates into witnessing the plethora of plights on earth, how could I bear with? Let the world get redeemed at my cost. Sir, these immortal words are inscribed on the walls of UNO in various languages. So, sir, his place of work in a, in a place called Joranda and Sonpur in Odisha should be developed to attract world attention. Sir, India is the origin of Buddhism, as we all know. There are many Buddhist sites in Odisha that's, that are still neglected, still remain neglected. The Ratnagiri, Lalitgiri, Udegiri clusters, which were once the site of Pushpagiri and Parimalgiri universities, as recorded by the Chinese traveler Wen Sang, should be developed to attract more number of Buddhist tourists, particularly from East and Southeast Asia. And the central university for the study of Buddhist religion and philosophy should be established by the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism. So my last point, I would like, I would like to request Honorable Minister to accord National Maritime Heritage Festival status to Bali Yatra. So Bali Yatra is held annually in the historic city of Katak to commemorate the glorious tradition and maritime heritage of the seafarers of erstwhile Kingdom of Kalinga, which is the former name of Odisha who used to travel to places as far as Bali, Papua New Guinea, even Australia, for trade and commerce. Sir, India, as India looks to the East, and we are talking about the Act, Act East policy, it is only appropriate and timely, sir, to accord national status to this uh, glorious festival. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I have a request here. Shri K.C. Ramurthy, he wanted to leave early. He requests to speak now and out of the turn. Can I permit him?